Upon completing this video, you will be able to identify the following. A general summary of the regulations, full body harnesses including H and X style, lanyards, lifelines and rope grabs, inspections, anchor points, fall distance, the pendulum effect, rescue procedures, and how to use your fall arrest system so that you cannot fall off of the edge. Approximately three weeks ago, I was stripping a calm on the edge of the building, and one of the rods I was using to support myself didn't have a bolt on the other end. It slid out, and I went with it. Fortunately, I was tied off, and that's what saved my life, because I was going down five floors. CSA harnesses are classified into several groups which include fall arrest harnesses, which have a single D-ring in the middle of the upper back, ladder climbing harnesses recognized by the D-ring on the chest, work positioning harnesses, which have rings on both hips, a rescue harness, which have rings at the top of the shoulders, and a controlled descent harness, which has rings on both the front and the back. Some harnesses are versatile for multi-use. Make sure you're wearing the correct type of harness for your application. In this video, we will be mainly looking at Group A harnesses for fall arrest applications. A typical full body harness has shoulder straps, a chest strap, and leg straps. It is adjustable for different size workers, and there is a single D-ring located on the middle of the upper back in between the shoulder blades. When putting on a harness, always take a look at it to determine which way is up, where the front and back are, and that the straps are not tangled. Put the harness on like a vest, put the harness over your shoulders, and make sure the leg straps are hanging behind you. When connecting the chest strap, make sure you adjust it tight enough so that you cannot get the shoulder straps off of your shoulders, and place it at mid-chest height. Reach between your legs and pull the leg straps up to connect to the buckle on your hip. Make sure you have the leg strap comfortably snug, you don't want the leg straps to be too loose. Have enough room to fit a fist or a hand in between the leg strap and your leg. Next, check the body adjustment. Stand tall and the side strap should just be pulling snug. Adjust the side straps as needed. The D-ring should be on the upper back in between the shoulder blades. Proper fitting of a harness is critical in the event of a fall. A harness that is not properly adjusted can cause serious injury. A note for women or large men in construction. Due to the shearing forces in the H-style harness as shown here, this is not a good choice for women or large men. Be sure to check with the manufacturer regarding female users. X-style harnesses have been engineered to reduce the shearing forces in the chest area, making this harness a better choice. Another important part of your harness system is your lanyard. Lanyards come in various lengths, but six feet is very common. Lanyards come with snap hooks on each end and can vary depending on use. Snap hooks have a safety locking feature that is required by CSA. Lanyards also come with a built-in shock absorber that will cushion your fall. Shock absorbers reduce the force of a fall to under 900 pounds. Never hook lanyards together or modify your lanyard in any way. Next to the harness and lanyard system itself, the anchor point is one of the main components in your fall arrest system. An anchor point must be strong. As a matter of fact, an anchor point must be strong enough to hang a mid-sized vehicle from, a minimum of 3,600 pounds. Anchor points can come in a variety of styles, from a rope tied around the ridge of a roof under construction, a strap system anchored to predetermined points, a steel anchor built into a roof, an adjustable temporary bracket system used by roofers, or a tie-off adapter. Whatever you're using as an anchor point, make sure it's strong enough. Let's take a look at vertical and horizontal lifelines. In many cases, workers will need to hang vertical lifelines in order to create an attachment point at the work location. For example, roofers or form workers. Typical vertical lifelines are 5 eighths of an inch or 16 millimeters in diameter, and most have snap hooks on each end and are made from polypropylene blended materials, making it very strong chemical and rot resistant. Horizontal lifelines must be designed by a professional engineer. Design drawings must be kept on site. The line must have a nameplate stating how many workers may be attached to it at one time. 
and the lifelines must be inspected before its use by a professional engineer or a competent worker appointed by the supervisor. Lifelines can be very useful for workers such as iron workers. The lifeline provides fall arrest protection but still allows full mobility. Another option when a worker needs full mobility and also needs fall arrest protection would be self-retracting lanyards or lifelines. Rope grabs are engineered to attach to vertical lifelines, creating a flexible attachment point. But if there is a downward force applied to the rope grab, it will lock onto the lifeline. All fall arrest equipment must be rated for 5,000 pounds, recognized by a 5M stamp. Fall arrest equipment is expected to last five years, but that life can be shortened by misuse and improper care. All of the equipment that we have talked about here must be inspected before each use and documented on a regular basis. Remove any equipment that has signs of cuts, tears, frayed material, burn holes, and sun faded materials as well. Check the buckles and snap hooks for proper operation and that no parts are sticking or oxidized. Always check that the anchor point is in good condition and it will hold you. If it doesn't look right, it probably isn't. Fall distance is something that is often overlooked. In order to make sure we don't hit the ground or floor below us, we must make sure of a few measurements. These distances work for a typical 6 foot lanyard and a 6 foot tall worker. Remember, always measure from the attachment point. First we have a 6 foot lanyard, then we have a 3.5 foot deployment on the shock absorber. The worker's height must be added as we can see in the illustration. Then we add an extra 3 feet for safety factor. Therefore. With a typical fall arrest system, we need 18 and a half feet clearance from the attachment point to the ground below. Another good reminder with attachment points is to make sure that your attachment point is directly overhead. If the attachment point is not directly overhead, when you fall, this will cause a swing effect and cause you to hit objects in your swing path, potentially causing serious injury. Some rescue provisions may include supply of special high-reach equipment, use of scissor lifts, ladders, or pulling the worker back onto a safe work platform. Remember, you only have a 15-minute window to save a worker before their blood circulation becomes compromised. One of the final items we would like to talk about is using your fall arrest system to restrict your travel so that you cannot fall off at the open edge. This travel restraint is referred to as fall protection, and if possible, preventing the fall is obviously far better than being able to fall. Remember, the best way to deal with a fall hazard is to eliminate it. Even though harnesses are very common, they do not eliminate the possibility of falling and should be used as a last resort. In summary, the equipment can only save you if you're wearing it. Wearing the equipment properly and inspecting it on a daily basis is very important. Most regulations require the use of harnesses if you cannot use guardrails and the fall height is more than 8 feet, but check your state or provincial regulations for the requirements in your area. If you have any further questions about your equipment, the company's fall arrest procedures or regulations, there are several sources you can get in touch with, such as the equipment manufacturer, your company's health and safety coordinator, your State or Provincial Construction Safety Association, or your local Ministry of Labor office. And remember, if it doesn't look right, it probably isn't. Please ask questions.